tracking cores, return parts, and core returns can be accomplished in TechMetric. So let's take a look at repair order 159. If I navigate to the estimate tab, notice I have one approved job for a starter. I have a needed part and a quoted part. If you quote a part from Worldpack, Parts Tech, or Next Part, it will push through that there is a core involved and the advisor would have an indication that there's a core here. For the needed part, I need to order the part manually by phone and manually input my core information. To do this, I'm gonna to go to the parts hub. We have a number two indicating there are two parts we need to deal with. In parts hub, down at the bottom, you have three tabs. Needed for your needed parts that you manually ordered, Quoted parts, if you've got them from Worldpack Parts Tech or Next Part, and we haven't ordered or received anything just yet. So for my needed part, it's right here. I can shop Worldpack or Parts Tech or Next Part here. But for this one, I'm gonna pick up the telephone and call my local vendor, and I'm gonna enter a phone order. Here I can place the vendor that I'm calling. I can make the PO whatever it needs to be. You can add to it or subtract from it. Currently, I don't have an invoice because I'm waiting for it to show up with the part. I am gonna use accounts payable. I am not tracking any tracking numbers. I don't need any notes, but the parts associate on the telephone tells me that this part is $250. Oops, and it has a $50 core. And I'm gonna save my order details. Now back on the repair order, that part is no longer needed. It's ordered from FMP, and we have an indication that there is a core that's on this repair order. If we navigate to the next phase, which is work in progress, where the technician would physically do the work, the technician could set the status, and the technician does have an indication that there is a core on this particular job. So we wanna put the core back in the core box and back on the core shelf to return. Now, to return the core, we want to navigate to orders where you have all your purchase orders. And up at the top in the header, we want to navigate to return orders. Here you can see all the parts that I need to return on in an itemized list. You can view by vendor. If I choose uh, just FMP, got four of them. I can also decide what part type I'm looking for, whether it's a part or a core. Then I have the original order with the purchase order number. You have the phone number for the manufacturer or the vendor that you can call and say, hey, I need to return these parts. Techmetric is not gonna contact that vendor and return the parts for you. You're gonna have to call them and get your information. So you have a phone number there, you have the original date of the order, the type, the part, quantity that you ordered, whether you're returning the whole unit or just the core, and then all the way to the left, or excuse me, to the right, you have the repair order number, the original customer, and the vehicle. So to return our part, we just wanna highlight which part we'd like to return. You cannot return more than one part to, or to different vendors. You'd have to choose the same vendors and return them all at the same time. So for today, let's just return our core. I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna either do the return in the interface of the vendor's website or I'm gonna call them, your choice. Once I get that information, I am gonna enter the return order where I can put information about the return order, my RMA information, and you do have to choose a credit method. In most cases, I think we're getting credit memos, but they could give you a wad of cash, a check, a credit card. You just choose the appropriate choice there. Down below, this is the part that we are returning. I'm gonna hit save return. Now that part is no longer in parts that need to be returned. In fact, it's in refund pending because we're waiting for our refund for it. So if you don't see a refund come through as a credit memo, you may wanna go down this list and contact your vendor again and ask where is the, the credit memo. Once you get the credit memo, you can highlight your vendor, make sure everything is correct, and then mark refund complete. At this point, you can change the refund date, but that's it. That refund is complete and you should have a credit memo and you can account for everything that you have going on.
Now back on our repair order, you can also return parts. So let's navigate back to the job board and back to repair order 159. We go back in the estimate tab. We have our parts hub, which is essentially like a parts department. I would jump into the parts hub. It's a centralized area where all your parts collect. So for the part that we just ordered, I want to receive it. Parts here. I'm going to receive it. I'm also going to put the invoice number in at that point. I'm going to notify the the technician that the part's here, and I'm going to receive the part. Now, if I get the part, receive it, and I notice it's the wrong part, it, the part's broken, or I just don't need the part, in your parts hub, to return the part, you would navigate to ordered and received, and where the part is, you would hit the three dots to return the part. By returning the part, you can put any kind of special notes here. Oops. Hit the word save, and now the part is gone. It's no longer associated with the repair order. It's not part of the job. It is in your return orders now. So you still have the purchase order, and that part that we just returned a few minutes ago has your special note, and you can go through the same procedure to return your parts. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and to share it with the rest of your team. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to see more helpful videos for auto repair shops. Have a wonderful day.